Hey everybody, my name is Dominic, and on behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Mike and Lisa Kai, welcome to Deep Dive. As always, it's an honor and a privilege to be sharing with you today. Hey, listen, we just came off of an amazing week. We just had Inspired Conference and it was fire. Drop some fire in the chat, somebody. It was absolutely fire. We had Pastor Sam Rodriguez. We had Pastor Teo Hayashi and our very own Mike Kai. It was absolutely amazing. But if that was not enough, then we tied a bow on it. By this past weekend, we had Pastor Jurgen Matesius from Awaken Church in San Diego, as well as Pastor Jared Ming from Higher Vision Church in Valencia, California. Uh, they both brought just incredible words. And if you happen to miss them, please go to our YouTube channel where you can catch their sermons or any other sermons you may have missed. So for today's deep dive, I'm actually going to focus on Pastor Jared Ming's sermon, which was entitled Hands Up. In this sermon, he focused on the story in Exodus 17 of when Israel was fighting against the Amalekites. How the story goes is that the Amalekites, they were coming to attack Israel. And Moses told Joshua, who would later be his successor, told him to round up some men and to go fight the Amalekites. Then Moses takes the staff of God and he goes to the top of a hill with Aaron and with her, who happens to be a he, her spelled H-U-R. They go to the top of a mountain. And once you get to the top of that mountain, what Moses does is he raises the staff of God up with both hands as the Israelites fight the Amalekites. What we discover is that as long as he's holding the staff up high, the Israelites are winning. But the moment because he's tired, he starts to drop the staff, then the Amalekites are winning. So Aaron and her who are observing this, they realize that they have to help Moses in order for the Israelites to be victorious. So what they do is, is they get a large rock for Moses to sit on and then each one of them positions themselves on both sides of Moses and they hold his hands so he can keep the staff up. Eventually, the Israelites prevail over the Amalekites. It's a fantastic story. But what I think Pastor Jerry was really trying to convey to us as followers of Jesus Christ, as people who declare that Jesus is both our Savior and our Lord, I believe that he was calling it out as a rally call, saying as believers of Christ, we have to help support Help, help support the church to help support the plan that God has for us by keeping hands up. In other words, let's not be sideline Christians. Let's get in the game. Let's join the fight. Let's be part of the team so we can see the kingdom of heaven advance in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, during his sermon, Pastor Jared highlighted four points. The first point was join the team. His second point was get in the fight. The third point was share the burden. And the fourth point was use your weapon. For the purpose of today's deep dive, I'm going to focus on point three, share the burden. But, we, but before we get into it, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I give you all honor, glory, and praise God for you alone are worthy. God, I thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to share with your people today. God, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be pleasing unto your sight and that you would speak to me, through me, and for me that this word is a word in season for everyone listening. God, please give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So Moses held the staff of God. As long as he was holding the staff up, the Israelites were winning. As long, but whenever he dropped his arms, the Amalekites were winning. Now, let's think about Moses for just a moment. I'm sure we can all imagine that Moses did not want the Israelites to lose. He was for them and he was not lowering the staff because he didn't care. He wasn't lowering the staff because he was just curious what would happen if he lowered the staff. 
He wasn't lowering the staff because he just got bored and didn't have anything to do. He was lowering the staff because he got tired. Because the load that he was having to carry was eventually, it became heavy. Now here's the thing, I'm sure the staff weight-wise was not that heavy, but you hold anything for a long enough period of time, it's not that the thing becomes more heavy, it's that our muscles fatigue. And I can imagine that for Moses, as he was holding the staff up with both hands, he started to feel the burn uh, in his lats and, and in his shoulder and in his biceps. And it started to burn and eventually he got tired. Now, the thing is, is that I am sure that when Moses started to drop his arms, he probably got worried. He's probably thinking, no, 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 God, please give me strength. No, 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 no. And yet, but he was just didn't have the strength to keep it up. He got tired. Thankfully, he had her and he had Aaron who were willing to come alongside of him to keep his hands up. And it's by doing that, they were sharing the burden of Moses. And by doing that, Israel was able to have victory over the Amalekites. So as believers today, as, as, as followers of Jesus Christ, as members of Inspired Church, why is it important for us to share the burden? Why should we share the burden? Well, allow me to offer you three, perhaps four points. Let's see what happens. But the first point is this. We share the burden because we're part of the family. Now, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, I had chores. My chores were I had to cut the grass, I had to wash the dishes, and I had to clean the kitchen. Every night before I could go to bed, the kitchen had to be spick and span. Now, my father gave me chores because number one, he wanted to teach me responsibility, but the other reason he gave me chores was because I was part of the family. And as a result, it was my responsibility to contribute to the welfare of the family because I enjoyed the benefits from the family. Being a part of the family, I enjoyed the benefit of having food on my table. I enjoyed the benefit of having a roof over my head. I enjoyed the benefit of having clothes on my back. I enjoyed the benefit of having a bed to sleep in and so many other more benefits that I just don't have time to list. It's because I enjoyed the benefits of the house that my father wanted me to contribute to the welfare of the house. Because as long as the house, as long as the family flourished, I would flourish. In the Bible, we see that Ben, uh, that, that, that her and Ben, her, <laughs> that's funny, uh, how her and, and Aaron, they contributed to the house of it, to, to Israel. Because they were part of the family. And if Israel flourished, they would flourish. But if Israel was defeated, then they would be defeated. So as a result, they saw that, hey, we need to contribute to the welfare of the house by sharing the burden with Moses to keep the staff up so we can prevail over the Amalekites. And quite frankly, family, it's no different for us as not just members of God's kingdom, but even members here at Inspired Church. Listen, if you've been attending, if you call Inspired Church home, then you are part of the family. And because you're part of the family, you also enjoy the benefits of being part of the family. You receive an awesome word every weekend. You receive encouragement. You are prayed for. You have fellowship. You are discipled. Um, you know, we, we, all these other things that you enjoy as being a member of the family. And because you're a member of the family, then it only makes sense that we contribute to the welfare of the family. And I wouldn't call it what's called chores, but it is called serving. It's by sharing the burden of the things that happen here at the church that ultimately we enable the church to flourish. Now, something which is common in a lot of churches, you know, and, and I'm not speaking 
about Inspire per se, but something that is very common with a lot of things that we see in churches is that we have people who come with a consumer mentality instead of a contributor mentality. A consumer mentality instead of a contributor mentality. When I think about a consumer mentality, um, I think about my kids. Now, I have three amazing, incredible, beautiful, intelligent, funny, creative children, and, and I'm just so blessed to have them. But sometimes my kids, they are just consumers. What do I mean? Sometimes, for example, um, my wife will prepare a meal for them, a great meal, or sometimes I'll prepare a meal for them because, by the way, I can cook, but uh, we'll prepare a meal for them. And my kids, they'll sit down and they'll eat as much as they want. And as soon as they're done, they get it from the table. They leave their plate. They leave their utensils. They leave their cup. They leave their napkin. They leave crumbs all over the place and they leave their chair out. In other words, my kids are just acting as consumers. And sometimes when people come to church, sometimes we act like consumers as well. We come to church expecting, hey, I'm here to get fed. So feed me. Pastor, give me a good word so I can be fed. Worship team, give me good worship so I can be fed. Hey, uh, staff and, and dream team, you know, you know, wait on me so I can be fed. And as soon as you are full, you say, oh man, my spirit is so full, I couldn't eat another bite. You get up from the table and say, deuces, I'm out. I'll see you for the meal next week. And that's a consumer mentality, whereas is the focus is just getting myself fed, but not worrying about other people getting fed. And the thing about when we're in a consumer mentality is that often uh, we find ourselves more critical than people who are contributors. I mean, uh, when we're in a consumer mentality, we're, I think we're a whole lot quicker to criticize when there's something that we don't think is right. Like, I think a consumer is, it's easy for someone in a consumer mentality to say, hey, there's not enough parking in the parking lot. But when our senior pastor puts out a call, hey, join the parking team, the consumer person is the very first to say, not it, not me, somebody else, but not me. As a member of the family, we are called to contribute to the welfare of the family. A contributor recognizes that, hey, I just had a great meal. Now, what can I do to ensure that the next person has the same great experience that I just had? Someone with a, oh, with a contributor mentality, instead of focusing on the problem, that person says, hey, how can I be part of the solution? What can I do to help? Why? Because I'm part of the family. This is my family and I want my family to flourish. So we share the burden because, hey, we're all part of the family. The second point of why we share the burden is that many hands make for light work. Pastor Mike said it this past weekend. Many hands make for light work. And essentially what that means is, is that when you have a large task, the more people who contribute to getting that task done, it makes a large task seem small. It makes something that is heavy seem light. You get a better return on your labor the more people that you have. In fact, King Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, at, uh, chapter 4, beginning at verse 9, he says, Two are better than one because you have a good return on your labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. In other words, the more people we have, we get a better return on our, later, on our labor. We're able to accomplish more. We're able to achieve more. And we're able to do it in less time. So the more people we have, the more we can do in less time. So that makes us that much more productive. So it's really important that when you help share the burden, you are making it easier for everybody. But at the same time, you are enabling the church to accomplish so much more than they would be able to 
without your contribution. So, many hands make for light work. Now, a perfect example of this for me is that, so um, I was active duty Navy for about 23 years, and in that time, I moved 15 times. And also, uh, since I've been here in Hawaii, funny enough, I've actually moved three times. So that's 18 times in the last 25, 26 years. I mean, so that's almost like I'm moving like every year and a half. Okay, hopefully that's over. <laughs> but anyhow, um, you know, moving almost every year and a half. Now, during this time, there have been times when I have moved myself, and there have been times when I have other people help me move. And anybody who has ever had to move, you know as well as I do that when you have, when it's just you and one other person, moving can be laborious. It is time consuming. Your body gets sore and you hurt because there's so much work to do, but there's only two people to do it. But when you're able to get five, six, seven, eight, nine people to help, the work goes faster, you're able to do more, and you don't get nearly as tired. Because, as Pastor Mike said, many hands make light work. Which actually leads us to the third point. The third reason why you should share the burden, why we share the burden, is because it refreshes the team because it refreshes the team. Proverbs 11:25 says, "The generous will prosper, those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed." Now, often when we think generosity, you know, we're thinking money, we're thinking finance. But it's not just that. You can be generous with your time, you can be generous with your talent, you can be generous with your skill set. Be generous with your assistance. And it's really important because when you're generous with your time and lending up your services, it refreshes the team. It makes the team less vulnerable to fatigue or being overcome by the enemy. Let's go back to the story of Moses for a second. Moses holding the staff of God and he lowers his hands because his arms are getting tired. Now, Understand something. When Moses lowers his hands, the Amalekites are winning. This is combat. This isn't a football game. This is combat. So what this means is that when Moses is lowering his hands, chances are people are dying. People on the battlefield are losing their lives. And it's not like the enemy is going to say, oh, wait a minute, you're tired well, I'm sorry. No, so I'm going to tell you what. Take a moment. Catch your, be- catch your breath. Once you feel a little better, you let me know, and then we can resume the fighting. No, that's not how it works. What the enemy does is he takes every advantage he can because just like us, he wants to win. And we want to win. So when I think about what Moses was going through because he was tired, I often think about what I see sometimes with our dream teams. There is no shortage of opportunities to serve on a dream team, whether it's parking team, shuttle team, whether it's kids church, whether it's ushers, uh, whatever it may be. There's no shortage of opportunities to serve. And here's the thing. When we don't have enough people on our teams, then what happens is, is the people who are faithful and wanting to serve They end up having to serve constantly, where once upon a time, what used to feel like an opportunity, something we get to do, now feels like an obligation, something that I have to do. And when people who should be, who we would love for them to serve every other weekend or or, or, or every third week are having to serve every week, eventually they get tired. Eventually they get fatigued. And eventually, sometimes, they give up and they stop serving altogether. Now, I don't say this as as a guilt trip, but I say it as a reality, is that 
when we share the burden, when we share the load, our teams get refreshed because going back to the point before, many hands make light work. Many hands make light work. Now, the parking team is a team that is absolutely dear to my heart, dear to my heart. And I know that during conference, by the way, uh, be sure to thank your parking team for how smoothly everything ran in the parking lot during conference. But it, it was amazing that how we had so many people helping on the parking team that everything moved so well. But when we are short on parking team people, Sometimes navigating the traffic in the parking lot becomes so difficult and they get tired and they get fatigued. But the important thing is this, when we help share the burden, they can be refreshed because they know that they don't have to, like Moses, they don't have to carry the load all by themselves. They got other people who are supporting. There's other people who are carrying the weight. So that's another reason why it's important for all of us to share the burden. My fourth and final point is this. We share the burden because we get to play a part in the miracle. When we share the burden, we get to play a part in God's miracle. Now, picture this for just a moment. Back when the Israelites were fighting the Amalekites, outside of God, there was no reason why the Israelites should have won. The Amalekites, they were a nomadic people. They were marauders. They were trained in combat. They were accustomed to fighting, not the Israelites. The Israelites had been slaves for 400 years. They were not trained warriors. They were not trained fighters. Yet, they fought and waged war against the Amalekites. And as long as Moses held the staff of God up, they were winning. But when, it, but when the staff started to get heavy, her and Aaron were able to hold his arms up and keep the staff high. So the miracle, the power of God could move in the space and that Israel would be victorious over, over the Amalekites. Aaron and her, because they helped carry the load, they were part of the miracle that God performed. Now, let's be clear. God doesn't need any of us to perform his miracles. He can do whatever it is he wants, but he chooses to partner with us. He wants us to participate along with him in watching thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So for that reason... We partner with him. And when we do that, we can see the miracles of God change. And, 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 and this is something that, that I personally believe is that when we are helping to share the burden of, of what's happening here at Inspired Church, what's happening in the kingdom, when people come into church every Sunday, who, we don't know what they're dealing with. We don't know what they're struggling with. We don't know what's happening in their marriage, in their relationships, in their finances, in their health, on their jobs. We don't know. But here's what I firmly believe is that every person that comes to this church whose marriage is restored, whose children come home, who has an addiction broken, who receives a financial breakthrough, who receives healing in their body because of something that you did, because of something that you contributed, because you were sharing the load. I believe that that, 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 that miracle gets credited to your account. I believe that one day you're going to be walking in heaven and you're going to meet somebody and someone's going to say, you know something, you don't know me. But one day I came to church broken and devastated and lost and not knowing how I was going to make it or what I was going to do. But then when I walked into the lobby, you were at the, you know, you were at the info center or you were one of the greeters and you welcomed me. You smiled and you shook my hand and you said, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to Inspire. Let's get you a seat. And because of that moment, instead of you leaving the church, you stayed. And then that person went into the sanctuary and had a close encounter with the Holy Spirit. And as a result, that person's life was radically changed forever. 
I believe that lots of us are going to have those types of encounters in heaven. But it begins with us being willing to share the burden. And if I was to add a fifth point, I don't really want to consider this a fifth point. But our leaders, our senior pastors, nobody knows the load that they have to carry for this church. You don't know the, the prayers and the warfare that they go through as the senior pastors. And sometimes their arms get tired. Sometimes they get a little fatigued, but they're able to stay the course when people like you and me can come alongside of them and help support them to keep their arms up so they can keep interceding before God on our behalf that we would have victory over the things that come against us in life. So family, It's so important that we share the burden because when we share the burden, we can, see, we can see God do amazing things. So if you need reasons as to why you should, then remember this. Number one, we share the burden because we're part of the family. Number two, we share the burden because many hands makes for light work. We share the burden because it refreshes the team. We share the burden because it enables us to play a part in the miracle that God is performing. So family, I hope this word ministers to you and I hope that it encourages you as well. And I also hope it motivates you to recognize that you are part of the family. And because you're part of the family, Perhaps you too are called to contribute to the welfare of the family as well. So, thank you. <laughs> but listen, before I conclude, I'd be remiss if I did not give an opportunity to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Wherever you are in the world, know this is that you're not watching this deep dive by accident. It is not a coincidence. In fact, it is providence. Because a God who loves you knew that on this particular day, on this particular moment, you would be listening in. And he was calling to your heart saying, I love you. Jesus died on the cross for your sins, shed his blood so you could be forgiven from every past mistake, every failure, every misstep, every evil thought, everything you have ever done. Jesus died to wash all that away so you could have relationship with God and that you would know that your eternity was secure. I can imagine that one of the scariest things in this life is to not know or to not be confident in where you're going to spend the next. So family, if you have not accepted Jesus as not just as your Savior, but as your Lord, and you are ready to surrender your life to him today, then please repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. God, I admit that I have sinned against you. Please forgive me of my sins. Make me whole and wash me clean of any unrighteousness. Today, I declare that Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. God, you are my Father, and I am your child. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that now dwells on the inside of me. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, if you prayed this prayer, congratulations on making the best decision you will ever make, not just in your life, but in your eternity. And if you did make the decision, just please drop I decided 
in the chat and one of our amazing dream teamers will reach out to you and let you know what your next steps are. Well, that's all I have. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining us for Deep Dive and have an amazing rest of your week.